All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. The Sacramento Kings are currently sitting at 32 and 25. They are the third seed in the Western Conference. They are about to snap their playoff drought, and they have the highest scoring offense in the NBA right now, scoring almost 120 points per game. Now, defensively, they're in the bottom 10 of the league, but regardless, the Kings weren't supposed to make the uh, finals run this year they weren't supposed to make an nba finals a conference championship whatever the case may be this team actually was supposed to quote unquote from vegas from the odds makers supposed to win the low 30s total all right and a lot of kings fans and a lot of nba fans including myself we were like there's no way that happens this Kings team is way too good, and that's not going to happen. They're going to win more. But currently, being the third seed in the loaded Western Conference, regardless of how this year ends, this team will make the playoffs, and it will be considered a success. So welcome back to the channel. Obviously, we're talking about the Sacramento Kings in today's video. It's been way too long since my last Kings video, so I appreciate if you guys hit the like button, hit that sub button for daily NBA content. And if you want more Kings videos, let me know know down below now unfortunately for sacramento they have well they've got 25 games remaining you can take that either way they have the most back-to-backs left on their schedule however this team is young and they have fresh legs but unfortunately the kings have the second hardest remaining strength of schedule and it came out super weird they have the second hardest remaining strength of schedule in the west all right Combined, their opponents have a .520 winning percentage, and 10 of their final 25 games are against teams currently in a top six spot in their conference. You have games against the Bucks, the Celtics, the Nuggets, uh, KD and the Suns, but whatever. Like I said, I'm not worried about it, man. I think probably if we're if we were betting people, right? If this was a betting channel, I would probably say the Sacramento Kings will falter just a little bit. And the only reason I say that is because you have the Phoenix Suns knocking on your door and they are just a game and a half behind you and Kevin Durant is going to be back a lot sooner rather than later. In fact, he's probably going to play in the next couple of days by the end of the week or at most like seven days from the time this recording so it's gonna be hard to beat phoenix in the regular season um i also do think memphis is gonna falter a little bit i don't see denver the number one seed in the west going anywhere i think they'll finish the season at number one the clippers you never know because it totally depends on health but I, I feel like if sacramento could be a top four seed with home home court advantage heading into the playoffs this would be pretty much an A-plus season. Pretty much an A-plus season. Like, seriously. It's not only this year. Like I said at the beginning of this video, the Kings weren't supposed to make the conference championship, you know, the, the conference finals. I keep saying the football word. They weren't supposed to make the conference finals. They weren't supposed to make the NBA finals. In fact, they weren't even supposed to make the NBA playoffs. When we take a look at this Kings team and we zoom out, what do we see? Well, we see Darren Fox under contract for four total seasons, or three and a half at this point. We see Sabonis on an extremely team-friendly contract, making just $18.5 million this year. He's under contract for next year. We see an expiring contract from Harrison Barnes, which opens up $18.3 million of cap space. Obviously, they made that trade. They made that move to get Kevin Herter. And I know Kevin, especially that three-point shot, wasn't falling before the break began. That's not going to last long. He's definitely going to get back at it. Rashawn Holmes is one of those moves where it's like, ah, it just kind of sucks. It just kind of sucks, right? Malik Monk, one of the best, one of the most underrated six-mans in the league. He started the season a little bit shaky, but before he went down with that injury, before break started, Malik was on a tear. And he was doing exactly what you need him to do, scoring double digits, doing a little bit of everything, night in to night out. Keegan Murray is under contract until at least 2025, 2026. In fact, if he pretty much makes two threes a night for the next 25 games, he breaks the NBA rookie three-point record. 
So Keegan Murray looks great. You have Davion Mitchell, another enticing prospect. Then there's a bunch of expiring guys. Terrence Davis, Alex Len, uh, Delhi, Trey Lyles, May 2. You have a couple of guys under contract for next season, like Casey Akpala. Um, you have Nemes Kita as well. What is that, a team option? He's got a qualifying option next year. So the point is... Any playoff experience helps this team vastly, and that's pretty much exactly what they're on track to do. You know, the big question with this Kings team isn't can they, like, you know, make the playoffs? We're, we're long past that. They're on pace, they're on par to snap the record setting playoff drought. All right? It's the defense. That's the big question. And to me, that's what they will address, whether that's via draft, whether that's via trades, whether that's via free agency, probably mainly free agency in next offseason. That's the big question mark. Because this offense is one of, if not the best offense in the league, and it's being swept under the rug. They are second in efficiency this season. Darren Fox is reestablishing, and the reason I say is reestablishing is because you know the Sacramento Kings haven't gotten too much love. They haven't gotten too much respect in the last couple of seasons. You know, Darren Fox, specifically for the last three seasons, has been a dog. The three-point shot can be a little bit suspect at times, but Darren on the season averaging 25 points. 51% from the field, just 32.5% from downtown, but that's adequate. That'll get the job done. Hopefully that continues to improve. 80% from the free throw line. He's giving you 4.3 rebounds, 6.2 assists, and 1.1 steals. And the reason I say he's reestablishing himself as a star is because you know, that was kind of a possible storyline in the last couple of seasons. And like I said, the Kings, you know, they haven't made the playoffs in so long that not too many people were worried or even looking at this team. So they trade Tyrese away and they acquire Demona Sabonis, who started the season a little bit rough, but he has been an all-star pretty much. 61% from the th field, 35% from downtown. He's given you 19 points, 12 rebounds. Three of those are offensive, seven assists. He's just such a great all-around player, especially on the offensive side. So can they get the stops? That's the big time question. And this is what this Sacramento Kings team has to figure out. It's a lot different than football where it's like, you know, all right, we just need to get a stop, you know, here. We need to get a stop here um, on the last drive in the fourth quarter. Once you get into the playoffs, there's a seven-game series, obviously, and, um, you know, the defense is certainly going to have to step up. But I guess I'm just kind of hoping and assuming that the chemistry is continuing to build and things are just starting to make more sense and it's a healthy basketball squad. Guys are, guys are improving, you know, especially guys like Keegan Murray. I'm curious to see how this season ends for Sacramento, and if I were to have to take a guess right now, it would be the second round of the playoffs, which once again, given they were quote-unquote supposed to win low 30 amounts according to Vegas, it would just be such a huge A-plus season. So let me know what you're thinking about this Sacramento Kings team. As always, be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button, show some love down below, and I will catch you guys later.